Well, thank you so much for joining us and Merry Christmas. We've got a great service planned for you and we're gonna start in just a moment. But first, we would love to see pictures of you and your family enjoying the Christmas service together at home. Uh, please post a photo in the comments or tag Bethany in them. Yes, and then if you grabbed one of our Christmas kits, this is a perfect time. So you want to go and get that. Inside that, there's uh, cookies and hot cocoa. And now would be a great time to get that out and start making that hot cocoa. Uh, if you didn't get one of those, it's probably just a great time to grab like your favorite treat and enjoy it as we start our service in just a moment. Well, Merry Christmas, and thank you so much for joining us. We've got a great Christmas service planned for you and for your entire family. Yes, and hopefully you were able to pick up a Christmas kit from the church. If you did, there will be several items in there that you'll use throughout the service, and we'll give you a heads up when to do so. Uh, now is the best time to pull out the hot cocoa and the cookie. If you didn't grab a kit from the church, no problem at all. Go ahead and just grab your favorite treat. And we'll get started with singing together.
Now we're going to sing a couple fun Christmas songs together with you. Uh, in your Christmas kit, you have some bells. Go ahead and grab those now. If you don't have a Christmas kit, that's okay. Grab some keys or anything that makes a jingle sound and go ahead and sing along with us. Dashing through the snow on one horse open sleigh Over the fields we go laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. With bells of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Dawn, we now are gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol, fa la 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 la. All right, come on, we got one more. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The tidings we bring to you and your King. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, as we continue our service, we're going to celebrate a time of Advent together. And Advent is simply a season where we slow down and we reflect on what Christmas is all about, what it really means. And each week, we light candles for love, hope, peace, and joy. And then today, together, we light the Christ candle and we listen to a reading from Luke 2. This is the story of the birth of Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone, everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, 
because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to, married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Oh, dear Jesus, we're so grateful that you came to this earth to be born and laid in a, in a manger, a very, very humble beginning. And we're also overjoyed here at this Christmas season to know that you didn't remain in the manger, that you left that manger, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for our sins so that we can be with you forever. And we celebrate not only your birth, but the fact that we can go be with you forever this Christmas season. Amen.
if you've been around Bethany for the last several years, you might have heard of our water offering. We've done this for the last 10 years, where around Christmas time, we've taken an offering just for clean, safe drinking water and sanitation. In those 10 years, we've raised over $850,000. And we'd like to invite you to partner with us this year. There's a couple ways to give. Uh, there is a donation box in your Christmas kit. You can give online now, um, or you can drop a gift off at the church before the end of the year. Yeah, and there's a lot of cool stories of lives that are impacted through this. So let's listen to a story from one of our partners right now. Every morning, I'm up before the sun. Three times a day, I walk two miles to fetch water for my sister, my grandmother, and me. <coughs> While I walk, I dream of going to school. I dream of becoming a doctor. My name is Violet and I'm Zambia. Zambia is my home and I know how deeply it is hurting. Every day, more than 1,600 children under the age of five die from diarrhea caused by unsafe drinking water. That's more than AIDS and malaria combined. <laughs> World Vision has launched the most ambitious water program of its kind. and is now reaching a new person with clean water every 30 seconds. Through their love and generosity, private donors have pledged to match every dollar donated to the fight for clean water. Join World Vision as they strive to change the lives of children forever. I just want to become a nurse. Thank you, teacher. Teacher, I'm a nurse. Become a part of someone's story. Merry Christmas, Bethany, and everyone else that's watching. I want you to know that I'm very excited about our water offering, and I want to thank you personally for uh, jumping in and participating in that. And we've done that uh, for 10 years, and uh, it's so exciting to see what God is doing and how it really changes uh, people's um, community when they get clean water, their health, and really helps women and uh, uh, girls especially. It ups the game for them, and, and we are excited to do that in the name of Christ. And uh, I get to give the Christmas Eve message. I love Christmas. I love uh, Christmas Eve. And this is different this year, uh, doing it uh, online instead of having you there. And I will miss not seeing you personally. Uh, but I want you to know that we've been in this series um, 
uh, called Not Your Ordinary Christmas. And this year has been anything but ordinary. It's been so different. And we've been looking uh, at what direction we should go as Christians and even pre-Christians as God has his hand on them. As you uh, start to come to God uh, on your spiritual journey, uh, there's a direction that God's called us to. And We've looked at the last uh, three uh, weekends, we've looked at this direction, which we call upward, inward, and outward. Uh, Upward first, we look at God and we worship him. Inward, we have Christ moving into our lives and we move further and further into Christ and our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then outward, where we share the love of Christ with our neighbors and and we share our hospitality with people that need to know and hear uh, the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I told you uh, every time I've taught on this that I, on Friday nights, watch with my grandkids this uh, Star Wars show called uh, The Mandalorian. And he says, this is the way. And so I want you to know for Christians, uh, they were first called the way before they were ever called Christians. And this idea of our direction being upward, inward, and outward uh, is the way. And we've been looking at the Magi and the story of Uh, them coming and giving the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And uh, I just love that story. But today I'm going to shift to the Gospel of John. And I uh, one direction that I haven't talked about is God's direction. And I've been talking about ours, upward, inward, outward. But God's direction I wanted to talk about is downward. His love downward to us. And I want to use a very familiar verse uh, for many Christians and even uh, pre-Christians many times at least have heard of John 3.16. Uh, before the, the COVID, we used to have stadiums full and whenever they kicked a field goal, an extra point, there'd be someone holding a sign that said John 3.16. And so I, I would like to just kind of open John 3.16, almost like uh, the gift that God has given us. And I love getting gifts and giving gifts at Christmas time and uh, and unpackaging it. So let me just unpackage this verse and just kind of go uh, word by word and show the significance uh, of God's direction downward uh, to the world. Here's John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And that's a, a wonderful verse, and I just want to kind of look at uh, the, the words in that. And the first one I want to point out is God. It all starts with God. And God is God most high, and he's our rock and our fortress and shield, and he's the creator, and he's created the cosmos. And uh, it is a, a wonderful idea that God uh, loved the world that he gave the Lord Jesus Christ to us. And so it starts with God. And then the the next couple words I want to look at is so loved. He so loved the world. And uh, loved is a special word uh, in the original language. Uh, It is um, agape or agapeo. And we just say in Christian circles, agape love, which is a, a targeting love. It's where you choose to love someone. And there's other words for love in the Greek language. There's one word that means a family love and friendship love. But this one is the highest love, where you target someone and you love them, uh, whether they deserve to be loved or not. And uh, it's agape love. But also notice it says, God so loved. And that's a little word, so. And that word, uh, so loved loved is has so much meaning to it i've told you um uh and if you've been watching online i've told you that uh, my father passed away last month and i want you to know that i so loved my dad i had a very good dad wonderful dad and i just i i just love that i so loved him and in way more than i could love someone god so loved the world and that's uh, the next word is uh, the world, and the, the, the Greek word is cosmos, where we get the word cosmos, and it's the idea that God created the universe, and he created the earth, and the planets, and the stars, and the sun, and, and he's, he's the creator God, and it's amazing, but you know, the way that it's used here in the context, the world means uh, people. And God so loved people, and God loves people. He loves you, 
and he loves me and he loves all different kinds of people uh, from all over and all the centuries and he loves uh, different colors and different tribes and he loves uh, all different people and different customs and languages. God loves folks. He loves us. And it is the most wonderful news. And then the next one I wanted to point out is that God gave. And Christmas season is, is the time of giving, you know, where we give gifts and, and we receive gifts. And many times it points to the Magi that we talked about. They came and they gave to the Christ child gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But uh, the, the one who really gave is God that he gave his only one and only son. And it is the most wonderful thing that he gave his most precious gift. And that's the next word I wanted to point out. And the next phrase is the one and only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that one and only son is this idea that there's a special relationship between God the Father and God the Son and that he loves uh, his son and his son is precious to him and he gives his son as the gift, the savior, the Lord that will save mankind. He gives the Lord Jesus Christ and his love comes down in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ, a baby born in Bethlehem. And it is the most awesome story. I just love the Christmas story. The next word I wanted to point out is believes. Uh, this idea that uh, the one and only son and whoever believes in him, and that word believe means uh, to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that means that you have faith in him, that you believe in him, and uh, you're not gonna look to yourself and you're not gonna look to something else, but you're going to look to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that he is the savior of the world. Uh, the next uh, phrase is the one that uh, is the uh, one that causes some consternation. It's the one that says, "Who believes in him shall not perish." And the idea of perish is that there is sin in the world, and man had a fall, and uh, there is this gulf between God and man. And those who are outside of Christ, you know, there's this idea that they are going to have spiritual death, but those who believe shall not perish, shall not have spiritual death. In fact, uh, verse 17, John 3, 17, the one that follows 3, 16 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And so this is the idea that Jesus came so that we would not be condemned, that we would not be judged. And God does not want us to be condemned. He does not want us to be judged. That's why he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. And this is one of the most wonderful things. And then the next phrase, shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that is the most wonderful thing. The word for eternal there in the original language is the idea of eons and that we're going to be with him eons and eons. It's the idea of everlasting, that we will have life everlasting upon everlasting eternal life, and that we will be in heaven with him. And I'm looking forward to that day that I can see the Lord Jesus Christ and also uh, be with my mom and dad. And uh, I want you to know that I I'm not excited about crossing that, that river, but I really love the idea that we have the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Well, you know, I left out one word right there, and it's probably one of the most important words. It's the word whoever. And this is the idea that whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that word whoever is a very small word in the original language. It's pas, P-A-S, and it means all, literally all. And so it's the idea that all who believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it means anyone, everyone. And it can be people who have had great regrets in their life, or people who are down and out, or people who have made mistakes, people who are lost in their sin and lost in their life or don't have a lot of hope. And this is a time where people have not had a lot of hope and there's lots of stress in the holidays. But here is this wonderful, wonderful thing that whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will have eternal life and will have this new life because he's the way. If you're one of those people, you've been listening to this and maybe you've been uh, listening to other uh, uh, weekends as we've been sharing uh, the story about our direction and you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ or you are not sure about that, 
I, I want to invite you to say this prayer and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to receive that gift and to have Christ come into your life. Uh, here's the prayer, and if you say this in your heart, if you're watching with someone else and you don't feel like saying it out loud, or if you're uh, willing to just say it out loud, but if you really mean this, the Lord Jesus Christ will come into your life. Let me just read it. I'm going to read it slow, and uh, I want you to uh, repeat it uh, or say it with me because it should be up on the telecast. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Please give me your gift of eternal life. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin and coming out of the grave alive. Please forgive me for my sin. Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. I turn over my life to you the best that I know how. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. I count it a high privilege to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ, especially uh, at Christmas time. So Merry Christmas and have a happy new year. Well, hey there, I'm Stu Collins. I'm one of the pastors here. This is my wife, Michelle, Hello. and my daughter, Kinsley. And this is one of our favorite moments, Christmas Eve. Yes, this is, we're so excited to be able to do our candles. This is one of my favorite memories growing up as a kid, going to church with my family, my brothers and I, this was our favorite part about Christmas Eve service. And a time when we have had to pivot so much and be joyfully flexible this year, I'm so glad that we are still able to do this um, tradition with this service. Okay, so grab your candle, whether it's out of your Bethany kit or you just have a favorite candle you want to use. Turn down the lights and let's all sing Silent Night together. Yeah, we love you and Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
It's so good uh, to sing Silent Night and to have the candlelight uh, when we used to do this at Bethany, and I hope that we can do it next year at Bethany and have live services, but uh, it must look beautiful at your home with the candle lit and your family in the dark, and that's just so awesome. And, and when we did it at Bethany, we used to light the candles from the Christ candle, and it's just a reminder that Jesus is the light of the world. And one of the things that I want to do is, is leave you with joy and say Merry Christmas. And, and I love bells, and I love to play the bells. And so, uh, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! Happy New Year.